Right, so now that we have our database set up, let's take a look at um, actually populating um, this, well, first of all, creating some tables and then populating those tables with some data. So I'm gonna create a model in Laravel. So let's pop back over to the terminal here and I'm gonna create a new model. So let's go uh, PHP, Artisan, and by the way, before I run this command, let's type ls and you should be in the same uh, directory where your artisan file is and let's just say php artisan uh, make model and we're just going to give this model a name so i'm going to give it a name of person and i'm going to add in the dash mf flags and that's going to make sure that whenever we create this model we're also going to create a migration for the database and a factory to factory up some uh, fake information for the database. So let's hit enter. And uh, there we go. We've got a model, a factory and a migration. So let's pop back over to our Laravel project over here. And if I take a look at databases, we should now have uh, a person factory. I can go ahead and delete this user factory because that came with Laravel by default and I'm not gonna be using it for this series. Um, then we also have uh, some migrations for uh, creating the people table and then some users tables, but uh, these two we're not gonna be using because they were um, provided with Laravel by default. Uh, and then the next thing I wanna do is also add in a cedar, uh, but we'll take a look at that um, a little bit later in the series or a little bit later in the video actually. Uh, so for now, let's take a look at this migration and whatever is in this public function up file is what's, or public up function is what's going to uh, get uh, added to our database. So let's create some information in here. Uh, so let's create a, a string column for the user's first name and we'll do a string column for their last name as well. And in fact, these are all just gonna be string columns. So let's do a string column for their uh, phone or phone number and a string column for their email address as well. And I suppose we could also just uh, do one for their city too. So now we've got a few columns for our database. The next thing we need to do is actually uh, migrate this um, information into our uh, database. So let's go back over to uh, our terminal and let's type in PHP artisan um, migrate and that should migrate all of the uh, tables into our database and it's actually only the one table for now. So if we come back over to uh, SQL Pro and I just hit the refresh button over here, we should now have a people table with all of the columns that I set up. So first name, last name, phone number, email, and city. And then of course, we've also got created at and updated at and the ID, which uh, were already in here when I started. Okay, so now we've got some columns in our table. Let's take a look at uh, factoring up some data to uh, create some fake information in the table. So, th so the next thing we need to do here is just go over to our factory and all we need to do is return an array with some data that we want. So I'm going to return an array um, and the first uh, column in that uh, table was first name and we'll set that equal to faker first name. Uh, and we're just making use of this faker generator over here, which Laravel provides, and that's going to just generate a fake first name. We can do the exact same thing with uh, last name, and that's going to be faker last name, and of course that's just going to provide a fake last name for us, and we can do the exact same thing for email, phone number, and, uh, whoops, uh, what was the last one? City, so faker city, fake a phone number, and let's go fake a safe email. Uh, so safe email will just generate an email that is always a dot example or at example.com, uh, something like that. Uh, so basically an email that will never accidentally work <laughs> and send to someone's email address. Okay, so now we've got some information that will be returned whenever we call this faker function. The next thing we need to do is create a cedar that will call this factory. So I'm gonna pop back over to 
my terminal and let's go php artisan make seed and we'll call this uh, person table cedar okay right so now we should actually have a cedar under seeds and let's take a look at uh, what we want this to do so we just want this to call our factory and it actually needs to uh, call the person factory so we'll um, add in the person class here as an object and by the way we could probably just use person up here and then we don't need the entire um, what do you call it application name in front of the URL okay so uh, we'll call this person class um, and then we're also going to pass this a value of 50 um, and whenever whenever I call this factory with the value of 50 or whatever value I uh, add in here, this is how many times it's going to call the factory. So if 50, we'll call the factory 50 times. And then all we need to do is say create and that will create um, 50 people in our database. The next thing we need to do is actually go over to this database cedar. Uh, it looks like I've got an error in this file. I'm not sure what it might be. Ah, ending a semicolon, great. Uh, okay, so the next thing we need to do is add this cedar to our database cedar. So by default, Laravel actually has this users table cedar, which was included, but I've not created that. So let's just change this to be person table cedar. And this is going to do the exact same thing. So this is just going to call that cedar and this cedar is going to call the factory. So let's save this and let's pop back over to our terminal and PHP artisan db seed and that should have seeded 50 people into our database so let's go back over to our database here let's click refresh and it looks like we now have a database with 50 people's fake information uh, great now let's take a look at actually using this information on our api route so let's go back over to uh, php storm and i guess we can close all of these files. So let's just close everything. Uh, and the one that we actually want open is just our API.php uh, file. And right now this is returning static data, but let's take a look at returning uh, an actual person from our database. So I'm just going to get rid of that person array and let's actually get rid of this return statement as well. And let's take a look at, first of all, our get URL. So this is going to have to get a person. So we'll do slash person, but then we'll also take in the person's ID as an argument over here. And then that just means that our function over here needs to accept a person, um, a variable of person, which must be a type of a person model. And because I've done this, I'm gonna have to just say use person right and just end that off with a semicolon as well so now whenever i return person here uh, what this is doing is it's just accepting a number in the url and whatever number is in the url that's going to be seen as a person's id from the database and we're going to return that person from the database so if i were to provide 14 as an id we should have um Consolo Hegman return. So let's take a look at that. So api.peoplefinder.test uh, slash person with an ID of 14 send. And let's see who we get returned. So we do have Consuelo Hegman as, uh, as the uh, person that was returned. Great. Uh, and of course, if I were to go uh, person one, then we're going to get the first person from our database. So rider feast, right? Okay, so now we know how to actually fetch information from our database. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look at moving this over to a controller. So let's create that controller now. So I'm gonna go back over to the terminal and let's type in PHP artisan make controller and we'll call this person controller. And that should have created a controller under app HTTP controllers. We should now have a person controller. Great. Uh, and what I want to do here is just create a public function show. And uh, this will just return exactly what's happening here. 
So we're going to accept a person or a variable of type person. And you can see that that's already been pulled in up here. And then all we need to do is return that person over here. Great, so our function has actually been set up. The next thing we need to do is just go back over to this root. And instead of running a static function over here, let's call the function from the controller. So this is just going to be person controller. Uh, and then the function that we're gonna call is at show. So let's save this and we can probably get rid of that now. And yeah, if we run this route, everything should still be working. Of course, if I wanna test that my contro controller is actually working, I could just do a die dump here uh, of person and that should die dump in the uh, in Postman as well. But let's just end this tutorial off with a uh, working URL over here. So I'm gonna go back over to this die dump, delete that and hit send. And yeah, we're successfully getting information from our database. So I'll see you in the next video. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, I'm gonna assume that whatever I was teaching you now was helpful. So I just wanna say, uh, if you did make it to the, this point of the video, subscribe and check me out on social media, especially Instagram. So all of my social media is on screen now and I'll see you guys next time.